Need for Speed This name triggers the childhood memories of almost every 90s kid because from 1994 till as recent as 2019, there has been a new Need for Speed game almost every year. Now before I start diving deep, let me just lay out the timeline for you. Have you ever wondered with such varying titles how the original storyline would have been like? There were no official story given by the developer to connect all the games, but with the power of the internet, Need for Speed community, modders, crackers, and fan theories, I present you the ultimate comprehensive story of the Need for Speed series. Now the origins of the main protagonist is yet unknown, but we know for a fact that the character is a male. We can clearly see him during several storyline and busted cutscenes in all game appearances. Player's face is never shown although it is partly revealed during the prologue of Need for Speed Carbon and ending of Need for Speed Most Wanted, and again as the alias Ryan Cooper in Pro Street. These facts definitely confirm that our protagonist is in fact a he, a dude, man, guy, fella, hombre, player, well you get the picture. I will be calling him player throughout the video. So let's get started. Once upon a time. The story starts in Palmount City in Need for Speed Carbon, where Player is a crew member of Darius. Player is the best racer in Darius's team, so he arranges a big race for Player against different bosses in Palmount City. But during the race, the police show up and uses kill switch against all the other bosses. Only Player escapes. This was a grand plan of Darius. He tipped off the police about the race and ordered someone to switch the bag of prize money. So now, the racers think he betrayed them, his girlfriend thinks he betrayed her, he thinks that his girlfriend betrayed him because she gave him the empty bag, and Darius wants Player to think that he betrayed him because Player did not have the money. Absolute genius plan, gotta give credit for that. So Player goes into exile riding Darius's Toyota Supra and he goes to Olympic City which takes place in Need for Speed Underground. There he befriends Samantha and soon the player challenges the best racers of the city and eventually the player takes on the number one racer, Melissa, in the final race and obviously beats her to become the top racer in the underground racing scene in Olympic City. After that he goes to Bayview City which takes place during Underground 2. After player defeated the best racers of Olympic City, he is offered a spot in the crew of an unknown contract. Player refused the offer and was later ran by an unknown driver who totaled the player's car. Six months after the incident, the player arrives in Bayview City. Samantha's friend, Rachel, helped the player get to the racing scene. After successfully completing a series of sponsor contracts, the player becomes noticed by the Raids, led by Caleb Reese, who is revealed to be responsible for the player's crash in Olympic City. Rachel warns the player about his deals of manipulating their sponsorships in order to claim Bayview's racing scene for himself. Player proceeds to challenge the raids and defeats them. Caleb Reese loses his sponsors and challenges the player to a final race, hence signing his own death wish, which he obviously loses in the end. After winning against Caleb Reese, player made enough money from his sponsorships to buy the legendary BMW M3 E46 GTR. Riding the BMW, he drives to Rockport City, which takes place during Most Wanted. There he makes friendship with another local racer, Mia Townsend, and he also meets up with Sergeant Cross, who gives the player a welcome gift. Remember this guy, very important. So after beating a gang member of Razor, player attracts his attention, or more specifically, Razor's attention towards his BMW. There, player learns about the Blacklist, which is the list of the best racers in Rockport City, and Razor challenges player to get a chance to be number 15 on the Blacklist, but he conditions that the loser has to give up his car. Now after being the number one racer in two cities, of course, player thinks that he can best Razor, but Razor is a cheating bastard and cuts off player's oil line before the start of the race. Yeah. 
Obviously, Razor wins, takes player's car, upgrades it, and becomes number one on the blacklist. The player gets arrested by none other than Cross, but since he did not have a car at that time, the police did not have enough evidence to keep him in jail, and Mia bails him out. Mia reveals to the player that Razor sabotaged the player's car and has become the number one on the blacklist. The player slowly grinds his way up the blacklist and finally challenges Razor for the number one spot and his car. By this time, every racer in Rockport came to know that Razor cheated on the first race. But after player beats Razor, surprise surprise, he refuses to give the player his car back. But Mia snatches the key and this happens. It's over, Razor. It ain't over until I say it's over. What? Mia was an undercover officer all along. But since this race was the ultimate payback race, every racer was talking about it and the police show up. Mia throws the key to the player and helps him escape, but lies to Sergeant Cross. Then Cross orders every single unit behind player, and I mean everyone. EVERYONE! Now that player is the number one racer in Rockport, and Cross has a personal hatred towards him, and on top of that the entire police force is raining down on him, player has to escape the city again. During the chase, Mia calls player and tells him that there is an old bridge in the outskirts which the player can jump across to escape, and he goes for it. As a result, Cross adds the player to the national most wanted list. After this, player decides to go back to Palmount, and Cross quits being a police officer and becomes a bounty hunter. Player makes the long trip way back home, and on the way, Cross shows up and crashes him. Luckily or unluckily, Darius shows up and pays off Cross's bounty. And the player is in debt again. Because now he has to buy a new car and on top of that make enough money to repay Darius. So player buys a new car and starts grinding again, but Darius takes the totaled BMW and keeps it. We are not shown this, but this makes total sense, because he was the only one who was present there. So he takes the BMW and repairs it. If he can pay $150,000 to cross just like that, then it is obvious that he is a millionaire. Back to the player, his ex-girlfriend Nikki tells him what he already know, that the other racers are pissed because he tipped the police and fled the scene years ago. And also now, Palmon City is ruled by the original three bosses each ruling the streets of their own. So he forms his own crew and starts defeating the bosses and captures their territory, one by one. As he progresses, he learns through his crewmates that something was not right, the night of the big race, duh. But as he learns from them one by one, it all makes sense who was the mastermind behind the setup. Darius that mother PG-13. After defeating the three bosses, Nikki tells player that Darius has been using him again to defeat the other bosses so that he can defeat the player and become the undisputed boss in Palmon City. Nikki also reveals that Darius staged the race that caused the player to escape and was using them to take over Palmon. I'm telling you, Darius has the mind of a criminal underworld dawn. Darius orders Cross to take him to jail. But Nikki made a deal with him beforehand and promised to pay his bounty. So this is the 69th time the player is saved by a woman. I, I gotta say, player is a good racer, but not a player with the ladies. And get it? Always getting his ass saved by ladies. Well, you know, it's kinda good for him. As Nikki defected from Darius, he hires all former crew bosses that were defeated by the player. I am serious, Darius is the perfect villain. After Thanos, of course. So player defeats them all and in the final race for the control of the city's street racing scene, player defeats Darius and takes his Audi R8. This is important because Darius possibly repaired player's original BMW and sold it to recover his losses. Then player leaves Palman for good and goes to race legally. Here onwards player takes up the alias Ryan Cooper and the events of Need for Speed Pro Street takes place where ultimately he becomes the showdown king. After that, 
player now known as Ryan Cooper continues his professional racing career and becomes a legitimate professional racer and the events of Need for Speed Shift 1 and 2 take place. Since player kept his track record clean, get it? Track record? <laughs> he attracts the attention of the police again, but this time they want his help as an undercover agent. So he is sent to Tri-City, where Need for Speed Undercover takes place. Since he cannot keep his current identity of Ryan Cooper, Tri-City Police Department stage an arrest of Ryan Cooper. He, uh, he's not talking and uh, he refuses to take off his racing helmet. Uh, I got his ID here, surname Cooper, first name Ryan. I don't know, something not right about this guy. In Tri-City, his handler is Chase Ling, who needs players' help to bring down an international criminal syndicate operating in the region that is involved in smuggling stolen cars. The player is instructed to pose as a new street racer and join in on major illegal street races along with gaining infamy with the Tri-City Bay Police Department. In order to secure entry into the syndicate, flush out some exotic cars being smuggled, first he infiltrates a gang led by Hector but Chase conclude that it is not him, so player is tasked to take them out. After that, player infiltrates another bigger gang led by G-Mac. That's what I'm talking about. That's how we get things done. Player is instructed by G-Mac to steal a car from Chao Wu, the leader of the syndicate the player is investigating. Player does steal some exotic cars for G-Mac and gets enough evidence for Chase to bring them down. And by bring them down, I mean Chase tells Player to take them out. We're gonna steal one of his cars and frame him with the cops. Make this happen! Now! Chase gets kidnapped by Chow and threatens Player to bring back one of the BMW M6 he stole from him. Because that car has a drive which contains all the evidence of Chow's illegal operations. After player brings it back, well, what do you know, Chase was working with Chow the whole time and used player to clean the smuggling ring from the inside. And second plot twist in a row, Chase shoots Chow and frames the murder on player. Third plot twist in a row, this time he's saved by a man, the senior officer Lieutenant Jack Keller. He tracks Chase down and player goes on a chase after Chase and finally brings her down. Till here is the original Need for Speed storyline which is easy to keep track of. After Need for Speed Undercover, the fan theories really start to kick in and makes it 10 times more interesting. It is very much possible that one of the smuggled sports cars was the original BMW M3 GTR of the player. And Frank Mercer from Need for Speed Heat was one of the police officers who was assigned to investigate the car smuggling ring. And Frank Mercer eventually gets promoted and becomes lieutenant in Need for Speed Heat. He has seen up close how racers operate and illegally modify and race in public roads. That's why he personally hates all racers. So during the events of Need for Speed Heat, during the daytime he was doing his regular police duty and by night he was shipping illegal imported cars for his own illegal business. Since he knew how, where, which cars are demanded and know how the illegal smuggling business operates, he knew he was above the law. He collected and tried to sell a whole lot of exotic cars which included, you guessed it, the BMW M3 GTR. Fully restored and in peak condition. That's why at the end of Need for Speed Heat story, he tried to escape with the M3 GTR. So that is the story arc of the BMW M3 till now. Now remember, I am not including any replicas because the BMW M3 version appears in all Need for Speed games. I am talking about the original BMW M3's story. Now back to the player. Since he has done a great job tracking down racers, he is given a job as a police officer especially tasked to take down street racers and for his first mission, he is transferred to Seacrest County. Here the police version of Need for Speed Hot Pursuit takes place. Because remember, in this game, we can play both as a police and a racer. So who do you think was driving being a police? Since it is ambiguous, exactly, it is retconned as the player himself. 
After being promoted to top enforcer in Secrets County, player is then tasked his second mission to go to Redview County. And here the events of Need for Speed Rivals takes place. Here, player learns of the top racer who calls himself Zephyr. After completing the first set of assignments, Redview County News Network publishes a special report detailing how the racers have become more public in their criminal acts and have become more dangerous committing more acts of damage of property as they wreak havoc on the streets. Hey, power of the internet, you know? So Redview County Police Department respond by increasing their punitive measures and attempts to bust racers and bring them to justice, resulting in public backlash. Later on, an officer is injured as a result of attempting to keep up with the racers. Public outcry swings back in support of the police and the RCPD and the officer swears revenge on racers. However, further increase in police intimidation and accusations of excessive force results in player being placed under probationary suspension with the FBI vehicle response team being brought in as replacements. Angered by the lack of action against Zephyr's crimes, player decides to go rogue as a vigilante, undercover racer under the name Fate, driving an impounded Ferrari Enzo and taking racers down. Zephyr sees Fate for who he really is, a cop, and retaliates by stealing a police Koenigsegg Ejera and respraying it in his own livery and starts causing chaos. As a result of Zephyr's action with the Ejera, the mayor of Redview County puts all police back on active duty. Player receives an invitation to join the VRT instead of returning to regular duty. The increase in police activity as well as civil unrest due to claims of police brutality while busting racers causes Zephyr to openly challenge fate and the rest of the RCPD, claiming they are the ones who caused the damage in the community and that it would be better if racers were allowed to race unimpeded. Zephyr openly issues a challenge to both the racers and the cops, a race around the whole of Redview County so that both sides of the law can settle their difference once and for all. Player eventually intercepts radio communications and tracks Zephyr down. After completing the race, Zephyr collides with the police blockade and barely survives. Even though Player takes down Zephyr, he is discharged from the VRT and the RCPD for his dangerous and reckless driving. He decides to officially quit being a cop and instead returns to his Enzo, finally becoming a racer for life. And with Zephyr gone, Fate becomes the top racer in Redview County. Known as Fate, who has taken Zephyr's spot as the top racer in Redview County. In it, he issues a challenge And guess where he goes racers. next? Seacrest County again! But this time, he goes there to become the most wanted racer. Since he knows what weapons the police use, he uses the same technology and uses racer-grade weapons against the police. After becoming number one, from there he goes to Fairhaven to become the most wanted racer there too. Here the events of Need for Speed Most Wanted 2012 takes place. And finally, from Fairhaven he goes to Ventura Bay where Need for Speed 2015 takes place. This is important because this is the final game in the series that has an unknown protagonist and Need for Speed developers said that it is the reboot of the Need for Speed franchise. So this game is the conclusion to the player's story arc. Here players comes to challenge real world motorsport and street racing figures Magnus Walker, Akira Nakai, Risky Devil, Ken Block and Shinichi Morohoshi. Now many of you may not know who they are, but I think you may have at least seen a Ken Block drifting video in YouTube. As soon as the player defeats Magnus Walker, one of his crew members becomes jealous and angry, saying that player got the chance to beat his icon before he did. After this, he gets over it because of another crew member, saying to him that if one of them gets noticed, all of them gets noticed. Once player becomes the ultimate icon, the final challenge is against his own crew. After the final race, all the icons and his crew congratulate him and they take a group photo together and player wears a mask to hide his true identity, finally completing his story arc in Need for Speed. I have to say that growing up with the series, I personally have an attachment to it and it brings back memories. Also, I did not include the other Need for Speed games which have a spin-off story of their own. 
these games were Need for Speed The Run, Payback and Heat. Now I know I mentioned Need for Speed Heat in this video, but the story in Heat is completely separate. Support me to reach out to more gamer fans by subscribing to my channel. Like this video if you liked it, dislike this video if you disliked it. My name is Ai and I will see you in the next video. Bye!